you know, we, we have to cover vectors. Okay, and you probably cover this in pre-calculus. You probably cover it also in um, in your geometry class, chapter seven. I, I taught geometry for 16 years and we always cover vectors at the end. So we say that a vector is a quantity, quantity with direction. It's, it's kind of like a, a pretty informal definition. We're going to define it better. Now, uh, that quantity is called magnitude. So magnitude just means length. It's a number, basically. It's a quantity. So we call it magnitude. Uh, and you're going to see the word magnitude a lot in science. And so magnitude and the direction, we call it a, an angle. Yeah, so an angle. Now, what we do is we represent a vector uh, with an arrow. So let me show you this. So I can call this the vector A. And now notice one thing. It's got an angle, so it's got direction, it's got a length. I can also uh, draw a vector B. And so let's call this vector V. And notice that it's a little bit smaller. So this is vector V. So this one has got a lower magnitude. It's a smaller vector. And then uh, this is the angle, and this is the angle theta. Yeah. So we use the Greek letter theta, and we, we write it like this in case you forgot. Theta. Now let me give you an example of... Uh, Oh, so let, let me draw, let me uh, write this, yeah. So a vector is represented by uh, an arrow. And why an arrow? Because an arrow has uh, magnitude and has direction. So it shows you which way it is going. And, and you know, the beauty of it, we can take some really complex physics problems and simplify them with this. Things that you cannot see, like a force. It makes your life easier. Let me give you an example. This is examples. I'm just gonna give you one, and then we're gonna collect a lot of them as we go along. And so, for example, if I say, I drove, uh, I drove north at 95 miles per hour, uh, miles per hour. I was going really fast, okay? This is a vector, yeah? And so let me show you why it is a vector. If you notice, uh, it's got direction, yeah? So this one's got direction. That's I was going north, and so it's got direction. And then it's got a magnitude. It tells you how fast you're going. And so this is the magnitude. And on the on the IB, they do ask you, is this a vector or a scalar? You know, so they make it, they make it, it's not difficult. So there are there is a section where they ask you this. Um, so let us define a scalar. Now, a scalar, yeah, a scalar is a quantity without direction. So it's almost the same as a vector. So if you say, uh, I drove at uh, 95 miles per hour. Now this one is not giving you direction because he has no direction. It only has magnitude. Uh, this is called a scalar, yeah? And so again, here is the magnitude only and no direction. So you cannot represent this with a vector because you don't know which way to point it, yeah? So the arrow shows direction. So magnitude, no direction. Oh, this is my example. Oh, okay, I, I was a little tired. So no direction is given. And so it should be a simple, a simple concept, yeah? And and we're gonna see we're gonna see uh, why that is important. Yeah. And so as we go as we go farther. Okay. And so 
I'm I this I'm recording this and then I'll post these notes in your folder. Okay, as as soon as we uh, disconnect from this. Now, the IB uses a a language, and so this one it says uh, the topic is decomposing a vector into its components. We also call it resolving a vector. This is a geeky way of saying this. So resolving a vector uh, into its components. So you will see this language uh, later on. Uh, and so, and, and that way, and that way, you know what resolving means. It means uh, it also say decompose, resolve. It's the same difference. Okay, so so let me take this vector v, and I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna decompose it into its components. So what I need to do, we call this the x component. And so you know, let me draw with the red so that it looks better. Okay, so we call this the x component of the vector. So we we draw it along the x axis, and then this one is the y component of the vector. And so the way we write it is this way. We say, oh, the vector V, and we put an error on top, is equal. And the way you write is components, remember, you write uh, triangular brackets. That is the official representation of a vector. And then I put the X component here, and I put the Y component there. And that's what decomposing the vector means. So my solution to this will be, uh, I'll say, oh, so the vector v, it has components uh, on the x, it is 3. And so this is 3. On the y, it is 2. So I gave you, I give you on the homework today five of these problems. So you should get at least five questions correct, because this is super easy. If you get one of those wrong, uh, I'm going to write your name on the board. And I'm gonna make fun of you. No, no, I won't. I won't. I'll try not to. Yeah, but yeah, you, you're. This is super easy. Yes. What about if we don't box up the answers? Oh no, you're gonna submit it on exam view, so I never see you boxing it. I just box it because mm -hmm. I like. Because last year, remember when you said that if we don't box it, we fail, and we get our name on the board. That is true. Andrew, how do you remember that stuff, Andrew? Because I was in your class. <laughs> Andrew, what are you doing here? I'm like, he's like, you're not in my class, company. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to see how you're doing. Oh, I'm doing fine. Uh, <laughs> I so okay. So you are okay. You are Goku. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can I believe you? No, on? that's the. That, Yes. That's not Goku, uh, Mr. Rosas. No, 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 no. You know Good to I'm see just going to have to leave the class because of you. <laughs> no, no. Good to see you, Andrew. Hey, but no, Mr. Rosas, seriously, you said you used to say that if you don't box your answer, you're going to get it wrong. You're yeah, gonna but I'm going to get my name on the board. Not for the homework, compadre. For the test, if oh, you don't that's... box it, I'll take away one point. That's I'll unfair. You took away seven points from me last time. <laughs> and the units, too. <laughs> okay, compadre. Oh, yeah, the units. <laughs> okay, bye, Mr. Rosas. Adios. Good to, good to hear from you. <laughs> I was like, who's this guy? Okay. Uh, and so just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to have a volunteer tell me, what are the uh, what are the components of this? I'm going to resolve the vector V. So can somebody resolve it for me? This is the Y and this is the X. So only one person, please. The x will be, what's the x component? Uh, the x is negative 5. Negative 5. What about the y? 3. And so if I resolve this vector, this will be negative 5 and 3. 
That's how easy it is. Yeah. That's embarrassing, this, isn't it? You're like, Mr. Rosa, if I can come by once, I can get it correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh... Now, it, it, so these five questions, they're super easy. Now, let's go to the next one. And, uh, you know, I, I sometimes I joke and I forget that I'm recording this. So, so if, I, if I need to go back to the previous screen, let me know, okay? I, I forget. Now, I want to find the x, the components of the vector. So, again, I'm going to resolve it. So, I'm, I'm going to break it down into its components. So, I want to find the components. The magnitude of the vector is 5.5. That's the length. Yeah, 5.5. And then the direction is 123. You always measure the direction uh, with respect to the positive x axis. So this is this is the same thing you guys do in your pre calculus class. You always begin from here. This is zero, and then you start moving uh, in the counterclockwise direction. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a formula, and then the formula works for everything. So, so here is the. This is a generic a vector, so I'm going to draw it right here, yeah. And this is the length of the vector. I'm going to call V the length, and I'm going to call this angle theta. And I will use, uh, let me see, a different color. So this is the X component of the vector, and this is the Y component of the vector. And we're trying to get a formula for this. Now... If you guys remember, uh, you guys remember mm, at the beginning, we say, oh, uh, let, let me draw Sokatoa here because I'm going to need Sokatoa to help me. Remember we said the cosine of the angle theta, it was equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So we say, oh, you draw an angle, you draw an arrow, you mark the angle, you draw an arrow, and it takes you to the opposite leg. And this is the adjacent leg. So we're going to extend the stuff that we learn into vectors. And so the cosine will be the opposite, which is the y. Uh, no, the adjacent. Oh, e, comadre. And this is on video. Uh, I'm not going to post this. Yeah. OK. So the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I, I, I'm getting distracted. So this will be the adjacent uh -huh, vx divided by the hypotenuse, and this is the hypotenuse, so the length of the vector v. I cross multiply, and I get the x component is equals to the length of the vector v multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta. So I have developed a formula to give me the length of the x component. And then if I do the same thing for the y, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause, uh, and then I give you time to, to process this. So if I do the same thing for sine, yeah? So I said the sine of the angle theta is equals to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So the opposite would be Vy. So Vy divided by the hypotenuse, which is V. And again, I'm looking for Vy, yeah? So I cross multiply. And I get Vy is equals to the length of the vector V multiplied by the sine of theta. So the x always goes with the cosine, the y always goes with the sine. And this is the two formulas we're going to use for this. Yeah. Now, there is there is one section in the book where we tilt the angles and we mess up the sine and the cosine, but I'll show you when we get there. Okay. So before we do anything, take a look at this. This one is the X component positive or negative. Uh, on my picture, I'm, I'm trying to resolve this vector uh, right here. Yeah. So is the x positive or negative? Only one person, please. Positive. Mm, it's going in that negative direction. Oh, this is positive, this is negative. So it will be negative, yeah? I just wanted to, to stress that. And then if you look at the 
Y component. Is the Y component positive or negative? And don't be afraid to make a mistake. Yeah. I got married three times. That's the worst mistakes I've ever made in my life. Yeah. So. So, so is the Y positive or negative? It's going up. Up is? Positive. 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 Okay. Son of a gun. So we know one thing. So when I decompose my vector, when I resolve my vector, I know the X is going to be negative and the Y is going to be positive. Okay. And so the way you do it is I use my formula. I say, oh, the X component is equals to the length of the vector, which is 5.5. And I give it to you twice. So 5.5 multiplied by the cosine of the angle uh, theta, which is 123. And I'm going to put parentheses. And then I put it on my calculator. And so I get 5.5 multiplied by the cosine of 123. Diva, did anybody get an answer? Rounded, it would be negative three. Negative three. Oh, and look at this. We knew it was going to be negative. Here's my point. The angle automatically will give you the positive or the negative. Okay? So you don't have to worry about it. The only thing is you have to double check. Yeah, you know it's going to be negative. What about... Uh, I got the same answer, by the way. Yeah. And so what about the Y component? So can somebody volunteer to give me the Y component? Only one person that all talk at the same time because I cannot understand. One volunteer. Would it be 4.6? It will be 4.6. You all got the same answer. Remember, that's the... You always answer this. I got the same answer. So I have resolved this vector, have broken down into its components. That's what uh, resolving means. Okay. So negative three, positive 4.6. Is this difficult? No, no. All you do is you use these formulas and it will always give you the correct answer. Yeah. Make sure you calculate us in degrees. Uh, don't loan your calculator to other people because they change it to radians or to that we don't use gradients, but radians and it messes up your answers. So I'm gonna go to the next screen, yeah, to the next problem. And uh, I'm, this time I'm not gonna give you any anything. I'm just gonna say. Uh, Resolve this vector, so I'm gonna call I'm gonna call this vector a. It doesn't have to be b. It could be a, b, c, w. It doesn't matter. Can someone resolve it for me? I'll tell you what. Let's have a girl answer the x, and let's have a guy answer the y. Yeah. So a girl is gonna give me the x component, and then a guy is gonna give me the y component, just so that we can put both genders to work. And I'll randomize your names soon. You know, I just need to put on my phone and then click the randomizer. Emma, what do you get? I noticed you stopped working, so that means you finished. Did you get anything for the X component? Oh. Okay, Miranda, do you have any answers for the X component? What do you have? Um. I got 24. You got 24? Uh, no, that's too much. Uh, okay. Oh, Say it again. 2.4. Oh, 2.4, 2.4. Okay. 2.4 makes more sense because it has to be, it has to be smaller than the 6.7. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Okay, okay. You may see. Yeah, that's I why I put my... Decimal. No, look at this. That's why I put my glasses. If I don't put it, I, the decimals go away. You wear glasses? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, what about one of the guys? What do you get for the Y component? Yeah, I got 6.3. 6.3? Uh, girls, can anybody confirm that he's correct? Is he correct? It 
It's a negative 6.3. Oh, is it positive or negative? Negative. Okay, uh, let's let's check to see if it is positive or negative. Let's take a look at this. If you go this way, the X is gonna be positive. So that's correct. So what happens if you go this way? Oh, it is gonna be negative. So you're correct, negative 6.3. Uh, who answered that question? Is, is there a negative in your calculator? Yeah, it's supposed to be negative. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So make sure you put the negative, yeah. Should I, should I solve them step by step or you feel comfortable? doing this okay but you were good we're good okay That's wait good. wait wait Just, please yeah. i don't i don't know i don't oh. know okay savannah let me go let me go step by step look at this yes mr please now look at it yeah yeah and and so i just want i'm checking to see if you understand to see if i continue or or if i skip the next one I, I put several problems. Look at this, the X component. The formula was the length of the vector, which is 6.7, multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta, which is 291. So we substitute these values. So that one goes there, this one goes there. And so I'm gonna put a parenthesis. So I get 6.7 multiplied by the cosine of 291 degrees, okay. Now, Savannah, put this in your calculator and tell me what you get. Two point four. Two point four. So we do get the same answer, yeah. And and it is just a formula that came out of uh, uh, out of the solving right triangles. Okay. Now, oh, so two point four. So so we got the right answer. And then to find the y component. Uh, if you look at your note, Savannah, is the length of the vector V multiplied by the sine of the angle theta. So again, the length of the vector V is 6.7 and the angle it is 291. So that gives me 6.7 multiplied by the sine of 291 degrees. And that gives you what, uh, Savannah, including the sine? Negative 6.3. Negative 6.3. So we do get the same answer uh, that, that, that we got before. So, Savannah, I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to have you do the next one. So you're going to do the same thing. Oh, let me, let me draw it here. Okay, that's my vector. And... Uh, I want to resolve this vector. I'm just going to call the vector W. You know, this one says they only want the Y component. We're going to do both of them, okay? On the, on the assignment today, on some of them, I only want the Y component. I only want the X component. The Y component is called the vertical. The horizontal component is the X component. So I only want this. You know what? Let's only do that one because it says just find the vertical component. So I want the Y component. Now, uh, can, can, uh, can you do this one, Savannah? What's the formula? Uh, um, look, look at the formula for the Y. Oh, oh so I use W, so I, I got to use W. So the, the length of W, yeah, which is which is the magnitude, yeah, and it is right here. It's the same number. Does that make sense, uh, Savannah? Yeah, I get the magnitude part. And then what about the direction? Now the Y uh, is always sine of the angle, sine of theta, and theta is the the direction right here. Yeah. Okay. And now all we do, we do a substitution. So the magnitude is the W and the direction is the uh, 167. So put in your calculator and tell me what you get. So you get 7.8 multiplied by the sine of 167. So. Uh, oh. I don't have a calculator. 
What kind of calculator you use, Savannah? Um, it it kind of looks like a box. It's not. It I don't. Uh, it's. I it's like not, the. I like the TI because it's got the TI thirty uh, X because it has two lines and it's probably the the easiest one to use. Uh, yeah, it, I don't have one like that, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Well, if you wish to borrow one, uh, you can stop by the school. I don't know how they distribute it so that you don't get infected with uh, the virus. But we got we got plenty at the school. And you can check them out. If you don't pay, then we charge you like 50 bucks. <laughs> no, but most people return it. Okay. Anyway, so what do you get? I need a, I need to like go into my uh, calculator app right now. Hold on. <laughs> okay. I know. I think it's best if you get a regular calculator because uh, they're easier to use. If you download an app, uh, download Desmos or Wabbit MU. I like those are the best. Yeah, uh, or you can use the the scientific calculator. Uh, I like this one a lot. The color one. Oh, that's really cool. Sometimes if you have a slow internet, it will take forever. But if you got fast internet, is can download it. Um, I got like a string of it's twenty two point. 66 and then a long list of other numbers okay so wait 7.8 times the sign of 167 yeah uh, I, I don't think you get that answer are you sure what well, I, mean, I mean that's what i got on this calculate i don't know okay so you put times in here Let, let me, uh, yeah, you're going to have to get one of those, uh, one of those calculators. You know, even the dollar ones, I'm going to tell you one thing. I say, I'm going to buy uh, five different, different brands of the dollar calculators. Son of a gun, they work. The sine, cosine, tangent, they all work. And they only last for like three years and then they fall apart, you know, but they're disposable. So if you don't want to check one out from the school, you can, uh, I can have one check out to you. Uh, I, I think I can um, get one soon, actually. I can uh, okay. just go out to a store and then be okay. Right. Are you going to take any any higher math later on? You're going to take a higher math class by the, the TI-84 color. That, that one is the best because it's, it's not that expensive. Uh, it's only like 100 bucks. If not, you're not going to take any higher math. You can buy this one like they're like twelve dollars. If you go to Las Palmas or Santo Tomas, they're like one or two dollars. Yeah. All right. They're they're in really good shape. For uh, how do I know? Because uh, sometimes I stop by to buy science stuff at the Santo Tomas or Las Palmas. You know, it's a beautiful shopping center if you ever go there. Also, you you don't have an answer for me, uh, Comadre, for seven point eight sine one sixty seven. I don't think I can give an ang accurate one. Uh, oh, okay. Anybody's got an answer for this? Uh, somebody got 1.8. Yeah, that is the correct answer. Uh, thank you, Arlette. Yeah, yeah we're going to have to to do something with your calculator, Comadre. Yeah. Again, you can check one out from, from me while you get the other one. Uh, okay, let's go to... Uh, one more section and then I'll leave you alone. Yeah. This one is really difficult. This one is really difficult. This one, we 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 want you to write the magnitude of the vector. And so remember, what's the magnitude of the vector? It's just the length of the vector. And the way you you do it is this way. Here is the vector on my diagram. And then uh, I have the x component, uh, the y component. I have the x component. And uh, what you can do is because you have a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So to find this, we use the Pythagorean theorem. Theorem. All it says, look at this. 
uh, the x component to the second power plus the y component to the second power is equals to the length of the vector to the second power. And if I take the square root on both sides, so let me use a different color. And so if I take the square root here and the square root here, that gives me the length of the vector is equals to uh, the x component square plus the y component square. And this is the formula that will give you the length of the vector. So we're gonna we're gonna do an example. Now, remember, we said that the direction is nothing more than the angle, yeah? And so the direction is it's just the angle with respect to the positive uh, axis. So if I draw an angle here, I'm at the angle, I'm going to call it theta. And so I know that the tangent of theta is equals to the opposite over the adjacent. So the y component divided by the x component. And what we do, we only look at the absolute value. You will see why. So we don't do negatives or positive on this one. And so let's find the magnitude and direction of that vector. So again, for the direction of the vector, we're gonna do tangent of theta, uh, this formula. Okay. So let us do that example. And this is probably really difficult, yeah? So I'm gonna move the screen up a little. Again, all of this is recorded and then I will put this paper on your folder. Okay. To find the, the X component, the, <laughs> the length, the X component is one, two, three. Oy. So it's equals, hmm. it's equals to three. And the y component is equals to four. So we say, oh, the length of the vector, I'm gonna use the formula, is equals to the square root of the x component square plus the y component square. So I substitute the values and that gave me the square root of three square plus four squared. Here's the three, here's the four, that's where they come from. And so, again, I continue, and that gives me 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 9 plus 16 gives you 25. And the square root of 25 gives you 5. So the length of the vector V, yeah, the length of the vector V is equals to 5. And uh, these are more difficult uh, on the homer. Yeah, this, the first, the first six, seven, they're super easy. These ones are, are more difficult because you got more stuff. Mr. Rosas, I have a question. Yes. So let's say we get an answer to where we can uh, simplify it even more. And as to stay inside the square root, would we have to put plus or minus in front of the square root? You know, no, in physics, uh, yeah, you, you're, I was going to mention that, you know, and I forgot. You know, in physics, in mathematics, you get uh, B is equals to the square root of 50. Uh, and they say, oh, that is uh, 5 times the square root of 2. In mathematics, you got to give exact answers. In physics, we know that there is uncertainties in life. So what we do, we get a decimal and we round it, always. We do not use exact answers. Because physics is more applied mathematics, so it's more a physical world. And the world is, is full of inaccuracies. You're going to see that towards the end. Yeah? And so the answer is, is no. Yeah. So, so we, just, we just do decimals all the times. What about the angle? Now, tangent of theta is equal to that. So theta will be equal to the inverse tangent of the y without the plus or minus, divided by the x, yeah? So, so let us use that to find the angle. So, uh, and sorry that I'm taking long. I, I, I spent a long time doing the, the things for the lab. I just wanna make sure that we're successful. 
So I want to find the direction. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the y, which is 4, divided by the x, which is 3. And so this will give me the direction of the angle. And so we're almost done. We're almost done. I think by 320, we should be done with this. So inverse tangent of 4 over 3. And uh, does anybody have an answer? Fifty-three point one. Fifty-three point one degrees. That is correct. Yeah. And so this is the direction of the vector. Now notice one thing: we're doing the opposite. We're taking the the components. We're giving the magnitude and the direction. The other one, we were taking the magnitude and direction, and we were getting the vectors. So we can go back and forth on it. And then once we get to the physics part of it, you will see uh, why that is important. So if you allow me, I'm going to go to the next example. Okay. So now remember the direction the the direction of the vector is with respect to the positive axis to the positive x-axis. So this will be theta. Yeah. So notice it's going to be more than 90 degrees. Your calculator cannot give you that angle. That's very important. And then um, I need the magnitude. So, okay, so this is the x component is negative 5, and the y component is, oh, it's positive 5. And so I want to find the length of this vector. Yeah, and so, so. I use a Pythagorean theorem. So I say, oh, the length of the vector is equals to the square root of the x component square plus the y component square. And that is equals to, uh, then I substitute the values. So negative five square. When you square it, it's going to go, uh, it's going to become positive. And then positive five square. And so that gives me uh, 25 plus 25, that gives you 50. Again, in mathematics, you will say this is 5 root 2. In physics, we say, no, no, no. We know there are uncertainties in life. So we just say the square root of 50. And we report the decimal, and the decimal will be uh, very good, 7.1. So the, the magnitude of the vector is 7.1. I'm sorry that, that I'm taking long, okay? I, I, I spent like 20 minutes getting those circles. That way we can get this rolling. Okay, so what about the angle? Now here's one little detail, okay? Your calculator cannot give you that angle, but it can give you this angle, and we call it alpha. It looks like a little fish. Is that Letter A in the Greek alpha, alpha. And alpha in pre-calculus is called the reference angle. And so, so I need to find alpha. So alpha is equal to the inverse tangent. So we use the same formula that we got before. Is the, the y, okay, so this is the y. The y over the x. So five over five. And remember, we use the absolute value. So this is negative 5. This is 5. And so alpha is the inverse tangent of uh, 5 over 5. What's the inverse tangent of 5 over 5? Anybody's got a, a calculator? I'll, I'll do it on mine also. Double check. Forty-five? Forty-five degrees. That is correct. So so the angle is 45 degrees. Now, that's not my angle, yeah? I am looking for this angle theta. And what we do is we, we say this. Look at this. See, see if this makes sense to you. Theta plus alpha gives you 180. Oh, so... Theta plus alpha 
oh, alpha plus theta is equal to 180 degrees. And I am looking for theta, so I subtract alpha, I subtract alpha, and theta is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha. This is the actual angle. So it's like a formula. And so theta will be 180 minus 45. And so that gives you theta is equal to 135 degrees. Ta-da. And so um, the code is there. I uploaded the sheet on PDF in case you want to print it. So uh, these are my examples. And I'll, I'll upload this onto the. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, edit 